This area is insanely beautiful! <laughs> wow! Hello, my friends, and welcome to the San Rafael Swell in Utah. I'm out here with my friend Scott, and we're having the time of our lives. This route is called a Swell Night Out, and you can find it on bikepacking.com. This is the second and final episode. If you missed the first one, I'll link that down below. All right, are you ready for some serious beauty? Let's do this. Buenos dias. <laughs> I slept really well last night. It's always nice just having the stars right above you. Oh, but I didn't see a whole lot of them because I just fell asleep really quickly. Scott, are you fake sleeping or are you getting all the air out of your mattress? Getting all the air out of my mattress. <laughs> I've never seen that method. You just lay back and you just lay back. I you like done that it. Before? No, I just like just jump on it. Maybe that's why I might pop all the time. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> There's something just kind of relaxing and soothing about packing up camp, rolling everything up, and just starting your day off quiet. You know, no music. No podcast, nothing. It's just us and the birds. Check that out. Crunchy peanut butter and Nutella. And the Nutella isn't frozen, so it spreads easily. Oh, I'm so excited for this. I never eat this in daily life. It's a treat that I eat on bikepacking trips only. All right, it's oatmeal time. It's oatmeal time. How to do? Separated. Separated, but it's got the berries on top. Yum. We'll see. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Well, feel free to uh, take advantage of my breakfast bar here. We've got the peanut butter Nutella Look at that. tortilla. Uh huh. Style. Well, Scott, I know your oatmeal is fancy and all, but nothing gets fancier than a French crepe, bud. Crepe. Crepe. A French crepe. <laughs> peanut butter crepe. I've been eating this kind of food since my first bike tour home from Mexico. Tortillas and whatever else you can put in them. Sometimes beans, of course, mostly beans. But in the morning, Nutella, peanut butter. Thank you, awesome spot to camp with quite a view. All right, we're back down at the water. We're not jumping in, but we are going to filter some water because we're all out fresh out if you ever do this ride and this thing is dry you're going to want to bring tons of water we had a pretty good idea that there was going to be water here so we counted on it all right so check this out i just filled up this bottle which you can see is very silty we have the filter down here i'm just going to put it right into my hydration pack <clears throat> bada boom bada bing <clears throat> Use those muscles, dudes are fun. Ah, I gotta squeeze this hard. <laughs> Little early morning hand exercising. I mean, it tastes a little bit different than tap water, but not bad. All right, we've got our water. We slept well and it's time to go. I think we have about 30 miles today. Shouldn't be as hard. Bit of uphill, bit of downhill. And as always, no crashes, no flatties. And no whammies. No whammies. There's no whammies, no whammies. No whammies, no whammies. Big money, big money, no whammies.
layers and see. Eons of time stacking. This is a great way to start the day. We're riding through some desert washes with canyons and spires all around us. And it's overcast, which is actually kind of nice. The light is really even all over. And it really makes the reds of these canyon walls pop. You collecting gold? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Just doing a little prospecting. No, my daughter loves to collect sand from places. And she's like, Papa, get some, get some sand, rocks. That's cool. So you put it in your pocket and take it home? Hopefully it makes it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard me say that I love the desert? <laughs> I love the desert. I love it out here. Check it out. Another automobile from the old days, or at least a part of one. Look at that guy. <sighs> Interesting. Old mining truck. Fascinating. I love, you know, the idea of the story behind this and who drove it out here, what kind of dreams they had of coming to the West and finding gold or uranium or whatever they were doing. And it looks like the back of the truck has been turned into a target for target practice. <laughs> and check it out. Pretty comfy seats. Box springs. Not a bad place to ride the bike, huh? No, this is about as good as it gets. I have to say this road is nice and dreamy and smooth and yeah, we're cruising. We are cruising. So we're heading up to about 7,000 feet. We have about 1,000 feet to go. We've been climbing for the past hour or so. The climbing has been pretty comfortable, just like this. <laughs> Almost doesn't even feel like it's uphill after yesterday's uphill, which was definitely hard. This is a nice break. I just heard something very foreign. The sound of a vehicle. This is the first vehicle we've seen on the entire route. It's just a little guy. A little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah. This is very pleasant uphill. It's really not that bad. The uphill yesterday was making me feel like my heart was gonna explode out of my chest. And what I love about uphill is that you very quickly get a different perspective of the world. 
and you can see a lot further. So Scott, summer's coming up. What are you getting ready for? I know, it's just good training for uh, Japan. It's like, the kids are definitely not gonna be as light as they were. <laughs> I mean, so last time around they were one in three. We biked for a month around the island of Hokkaido, which Japan is very mountainous all over the place, but Hokkaido is very so. Yeah, hauling 40 pounds of kiddo is a different story than 80. <laughs> Just doubled our doubled our carrying weight. You can do it, Dad. Oh yeah. No, I mean that's one of the things is like I end up taking more of the weight, evens Jenny and I out. I mean neither of us are big bikers, but it's a great way to get out with kiddos. Yeah, I think the key thing is finding ways to do things that you love, even if it's not your regular mode of travel or sport or activity, but to be able to just be on places like this. This would get a little bit hard hauling a trailer. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's fun and the kids just remember, they have so great memories about it. It's like still burned in their minds, even though they're one in three. Um, certain things they remember about it. So it's gonna be fun going back. Right on, man. Well, you have some more hill to do to- I uh, know, more training. Get those legs ready. Check this out. Yes. I love you, Utah. Scott is digging up some more magic dirt for his kids. You win dad of the year. This is pretty cool. Oh, I know they're gonna like this. Look at that. Yeah, that You're just packing it all in your pocket. Yeah, I'll start in there. <laughs> Nice. All right, Scott, I think we're at the top, I think. <laughs> it doesn't look like there's anything higher than where we're at. We've been going uphill pretty much all morning. We're at about 7,000 feet right now. Let's see, looks pretty downhill. This is like one of those moments when you're on a roller coaster and you're slowly chugging up and you finally get to the top and you're like, yeah, woo! <laughs> so I'm over here filming flowers in my Zen mode and I hear yeah, I hear I hear Scott go, what? What did we just do? I don't know. We're off route somehow. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> we, I think wah, we, wah. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. That just means bonus desert time. You bet. And it means another uphill. Because <laughs> you know we love uphills. That's right. That's what we do. Alright. We're back on the correct road. It was only maybe three quarters of a mile off. This is just a lesson for everybody. Pay attention to your navigation. <laughs> you might see a downhill road that you really want to ride, but it might not be the correct road. But you know what? I've gone off route many times and it's not the end of the world. You just figure things out. It's all part of the adventure. And sometimes you see something that you wouldn't have seen otherwise, like those awesome red flowers. Yeah. 
Back to mountain biking. That's right. This is the good stuff. We were all done with super hard uphills, but no, look, we're going that way. Up the loose rock mountain. Okay, buddy, this is gonna be hard. Let's see if I can do it. Here we go. Rum, 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 rum. <laughs> you got it, Deezer. Wow. Ah. Nice. That's a good one. I am really loving this route. Whoever put this together, thank you. I appreciate it. We have three miles left and we are lollygagging. We're going slow, checking out flowers and mine shafts and we're milking all the time we can out here. This one is special. Little bit more uphill. That's how it goes, always. Even if you think you're done with uphill, even if your route tells you you're done with uphill, there's always more uphill. <laughs> so we rode this road way out there around the corner, and here we are charging toward the finish line. That's a needler. Yeah, buddy. Doing good. Right on. We're getting closer. Uh, I mean, we came back up a big push. <laughs> <laughs> we sure did. We're there! Oh, I can see Scott's van. We are there. We are so there. <laughs> no crashies, I can't crash on the very last bit here. <laughs> Bunny hop that, I just did. Oh yeah. <laughs> the last obstacle, getting into the parking lot. Oh, can he do it? Yes. Limbo. Limbo. High five, Ooh. brother, that was that awesome. Was, that was sweet. That was swell, as they would say. It was very swell. A swell night out. Oh man, that really was incredible. I love sure that was. ride. I love that ride. That was a good mix. That was a good mix. Thanks for, uh, you know, recommending the San Rafael Swell. It's good quite the place. Yeah, it was, man. With the appetite. What did you think about uh, your bike? How did it handle? How was mountain biking? It was good. I was a bit beyond uh, 
some of my skill set currently, but uh, it was good. It was fun. I was uh, surely enjoyed it. I mean, even if you gotta walk it a little bit, but I was surprised even at the end. Yeah, the end was a little hard. And look, you have no blood. You didn't fall. So I know. We're all so, good. We're all good. It's all good. Like That's I said, the most important part. It was uh, surprising, but yeah, no, the bike handled really well. Oh yeah, it you want to know like, why? Because it's my bike. I know. You've done. <laughs> <laughs> you done some good stuff with it, but yeah, learned a bunch of stuff. It was good to like. Yeah, we're gonna do this again, man. Yeah, for sure, man. It was good. Yes, it was. It's a good way to travel to cover ground, especially in the desert. Yeah. Who wants some muddy water? Oh yeah, look at Scott has a whole bottle full <laughs> of muddy water. This is emergency rations, just in case. And I was definitely like, uh, I could dip into it a little bit. But. Yeah, we both ran out of water like a good hour ago, and we're like, ah, oh, we're fine. We got this, and but we are parched. Filtering that stuff. Dude. Yeah, look at that. That's what we were drinking. Well, filtered, but still. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah. yeah. So thank you all so much for watching this video. You are awesome. I love you. Please like and subscribe, and maybe even join my Patreon. And you'll see Scott again someday. Yeah, yeah. you can watch me flail more. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome, brother. It was good. Cheers. Wait a second. Before I go, I just want to recommend Scott Jurek's books. If you're looking for inspiration, you can find it in these pages. Eat and Run is essentially about his life and how he became a champion ultra runner. And North is all about his record setting run on the Appalachian Trail. Oh, and speaking of books, this is a story about my very first bikepacking adventure from Honduras to Boulder. It's pretty much an inspirational adventure story about following your dreams. You can get it at doozerbook.com and if you like this shirt, I will link down below where you can buy this baby, fueled by frijoles for life.